It's bullshit, man. So, uh, it's a, it's a, see, I didn't want to call out no names before. I wasn't saying no names and no girls or nothing, but now I got to. So we here in Chicago. That's what. That's not block the doorway. You want me to? We can come away from the doorway. Uh, so you you don't mind me saying the name of, of this? You don't. Pardon me, brother. You mind me saying the name? No, I'm on live. No, what's up? Because we had to kill jail and they're not letting us in. They told the senator, look. And we all here just to expose or bring awareness to yeah. the injustice of what's going on with these children. And they so guilty. It's almost like we the police and they're trying to hide the drugs. So the senator said to let us in, the senator. And they say a no to the senator because they don't want us to see what's going on. Now, I've been there a couple of times. And I already saw it. I can't unsee it. And when I was there, it wasn't no problems. So only four of us was going up there. And everyone that was going up there has a reason to be up there. And I don't know why the assumption is that, you know, there will be some kind of a riot or ruckus unless there's some guilt. It's like a criminal saying, I know I'm going to get arrested if you come up here. But that's not what we're on. We just want things to change. But what I need to know is why they won't let us in, why they won't listen to the senator, you know. And I don't know if you want to be seen or not, but we out here. And, uh, you know, we have real money brothers this year. Yeah. I got his father hanging on the wall, Paul. Yeah, what's so, up? Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? Real black it's man justice. justice. Definitely. And, and this is what we have to do. The minister represented, making sure we could. Sure. You know, everything is good. And again, it ain't about a problem. It's about bringing awareness to a situation where they're torturing our kids. Modern day, medieval torture. Some of these kids ain't seen. The light of day, they ain't been outside in over a year. They got these kids taking showers and drinking out of mop buckets next to molded water with mice running around. Yeah. And if they say something, they got the nerve to put a kid in the room and pull his dreads out with their hair, I mean with their hands, you know? And then they not educating, they drugging them up and they expect them not to come back. No, they want them to come back, but they shouldn't get tortured. Yeah. These kids are traumatized and there is no therapy up there from anyone with any color or not even a male figure up there. So when I first went up there, it was only white people, white women giving black kids therapy, and that seems intentional. Yeah. Right. So they brought the bicycle cops out. I'm not mad at them. You know, they doing their job. We're peaceful. Everyone's peaceful. What we gonna yeah. do? We gonna get, we gonna bug out next to a jail? That's, we don't wanna go right there. And then when we was in there, they tried to lock us in. So, you know, I'm just bringing awareness. I want everybody to bring awareness. What's, what's the name of the school? NYC Chicago. And, IYC Chicago. IYC? IYC, Illinois Youth Center Chicago. Illinois Youth Center Chicago. This is a warehouse. Look at this shit. It ain't no windows. It ain't no windows. Look at this. These kids ain't got no windows. That's the address right there. You see, a, you see the bullet holes in there? This shit is right on the street. It's right on the street. So I don't see how they expect these kids to ever get better. They want them to get worse. The recidivism rate is 90%. Look, let me show y'all the bullet hole. Look at this shit. Look at the window. How are you gonna have people, how anybody human could be in here? Somebody shot at that building three years ago. You don't, yeah, you don't, you give animals have windows. How are you gonna put a kid in a box? You see that bullet hole? This shit look like a big coffin. You see the kid? There's bullet holes. That's a bullet hole. So, you know, instead of talking about shit, we trying to fix shit. And we tried, like literally the senator told them to let us in. A represent, a representative of the senator is here. Like, yo, the senator said, let me in. Let us in, we, we arranged it. All they did was call the police on us. We got doctors out here, principals out here. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody doing that. You can't assume because be upset or, you know, not satisfied about what's going on, that there's going to be violence and we're going to end up in there. We're not getting into that. You know, we're dealing with this in a logical way. I just need to know why. That's it. You know, so while we talking about other people's problems and bullshit, we have real situations where our children are being tortured and trained to come back and teach their kids to come back. And just like while a man's in the jail, he can't raise his child. You know, then what happens? He ends up in the jail with his child. So, again, we just trying to fix things. Again, and, and, and I wasn't trying to call out no names. What was homie's name that wouldn't let us in? Hurley? He's a, he's a assistant superintendent Hurley he's responsible will not for let us in. He's he's a, he might be the one. So me, you know, I, I know where I'm from. It just sounds like somebody cooking the books. 
and I'm gonna say allegedly, so I don't get a lawsuit, but that's just what it looks like. So if every kid's supposed to get 1.2 or over that a year per bed, why they gotta pay for their own toilet paper? I don't so get that. $12 million, $12 million, I'm a principal. $12 million is going towards the medication, one psychiatrist and all white female therapists. Nothing against that, but we need to have a black perspective. Gotcha. You know, in, in addition to that, but it's uh this this hellhole is a million dollars a year, over a hundred thousand dollars a month. Per child. Per, uh, no, just to no, to lease this facility. It's a million dollars. Eighty eight thousand a month. Yeah. That's what that is a million a year. Eighty eight thousand, trust me. And this is ridiculous. Not even a window. If you go in the phone, it's still an old nineteen seventy, you put the button phone on top. You know, that's just a signal of what's going on. But when you go upstairs, it's like it's sad. So they trying to clean things up, obviously, but it's so bad you can't put a band-aid on that. And it's dangerous for the adults and the kids to be in there because it's mold. So we all know what mold does. So they gotta shut that you know, at least and they, and they check their school. They had me investigated. Absolutely. They had me investigated as a principal uh, because of the exposure to the biological warfare on our youth. Uh, and the fact that they're giving melatonin and clonidine, which clonidine affects your central nervous system, and the it also affects the young person's ability to procreate. Now, if you couple that with psychotropic medication, how does that have long-term implications on our youth's ability to be able to uh, uh, to live a productive life? Uh, since I've been here uh, in the five years, I've lost over 18 students in a span of five years. 80% of the students return within two to three months. And so there's a biological warfare. Yes. Uh, there's a, a, a fail proof, three strikes and you're in, is what's going on with our young people. And so it's antiquated. We need uh, we need an overhaul. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the mayor's, uh, I mean the governor's really, is willing to sit down with us and have a conversation. And all we want is to have a conversation. We want to have oversight from now on that this will never happen again because right here in plain sight, our kids are hidden in plain sight. It's a youth that transferred from IYC Harrisburg. He came here and they pulled his braids out his head. I thought he had wing worm, but they pulled his braids out his head. Another youth from IYC Harrisburg, which I'm asking the governor to launch an investigation because a youth that transferred to our facility was beat with handcuffs, used as brass knuckles. So these are atrocities that's happening behind these closed doors. And I'm one principal. I'm not afraid. I'd rather leave standing up than on my knees. Well, so, as, as, a, as a human being, yeah. you can't look the other way for a check. If you're a human being and you see children getting beaten, mistreated, and you look the other way, what kind of person are you? And you don't want to turn into that kind of person. So, so this is just him being human. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so kudos to, to Dame Dash because Dame Dash and I met up on off school grounds. And I want to give a shout out to the to the president who came from New York in a day. He came he came in a day. Yes, uh, sir. Doc, doc, in a day. Yes, sir. In a day. Appreciate the it. president came down in a day. So I want to definitely give it up to uh, Dr. Uh, McKeezy for representing us to off off school grounds for the support they give me for my New York family. I got all the love in the world for, for McKeezy and my brother Dane, who's well, never well, well, always about here, my here's the thing, strategically, this man knows how to make a school run. He, he, he's, a, he, he's curated hundreds of principals, so he could go in that jail and tell, tell them what they're doing wrong. So we come up with a solution. We, we're not coming with like like any, any like, you know, we're mad, we're like, look, this is what's going on. Let's, let's get the education right. So we're bringing the, 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 the president of, of the OSG and to come and just tell us what you could do to make this better, but you won't even let us in the door. So there wasn't no cameras out here until you didn't let us in the door. So why are you making, I, I, and I'm hoping that somebody, I don't know if they got service in there, but somebody tell somebody, man, like y'all making it hot for yourself. I wasn't saying no name. Right. I just wanted to get fixed. Right. But I'm not gonna sit there and let you do that to our kids. I got kids. Right. And those kids, the way they traumatize, it makes a kid that's not traumatized when they around them, they gonna be traumatized. So if your kid ain't going through nothing, you don't want him to go through something by some kid that is going through something. So keep yourself safe. You know, but you can't ignore this until you don't you don't ignore this till this is your child. You know? We wonder why there's a, a cycle that keeps going on and on and on. It's intentional. Anything it's doctors, there's there's, there's politicians, they're not dumb. They're doing it on purpose. So any cycle that happens over and over again is done on purpose. 
So it seems like they don't want change. So we come in here with a solution and they're not letting us in. It just makes things suspicious. And we got to call your name and we just want to know why. That's true. You know, ain't nobody beefing. We ain't got to be. There ain't those times. You know what I mean? It's just making and bringing awareness. I want your kids to ask you how you keep that job. Why you didn't, I want, if you got a child, why you didn't let them in? Your kid should ask you that. You know what I mean? So this is the awareness that I think we need to be leveraging. Y'all bring, y'all tell everybody and go into your market and check the kids jail and see if they let you in. Cause I suspect if this is happening here, it's happening everywhere. But if we could bring the awareness here, hopefully we make it hot for everybody. But y'all can't keep torturing our kids just so that you could keep those beds filled. You know, a hotel, people want return customers. This is independent sector. This ain't nothing but a hotel without windows. They want return customers. But it shouldn't be at the expense of us. You gotta see these kids, man. I won't even bring my wife in there because I don't want her to have to get the therapy the next day. It's that bad. And it's not safe to walk in there because of the mold. So y'all know what black mold does. It's black mold, you gotta move out. Whether it's Beverly Hills or it's in the prison, you gotta get out because everybody in there is exposed. So them kids got to be tested. Every, the whole staff got to be tested. And I just think there's a lot of exposure for a lot of a lot of lawsuits. You know, because what will happen is you get pregnant and your kid will have it and the kid will have mold in the system. I've mm. seen it happen. Mm. You know, people die from that. Mm. But having to drink water out of a moldy mop bucket is demeaning. A kid should never have to think yeah, if it's all right to use. It's, it's, it's not... You don't even make a dog drink out of a a, 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 a dirty mop, 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 mop bucket. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just hard not to say something, but and it's really harder not to do something. So that's why we're down here, period. So we bring in awareness, tell everybody that these jails and this particular one, we down here trying to help the senator told him to let us in, and he, yeah, won't, he won't even listen to the senator. So now we got to call the governor, and we'll see what happens. Call more, we need solutions to the most cruel and harsh conditions. Well, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. Fred Hampton Jr. Now you know this is Fred. <laughs> literally a few blocks, like four or five blocks away from where well, Chairman Fred and the fifth and the Mark Clark were assassinated at, like literally right around the corner. Yeah, right here in this, in this in this concentration camp. I can't use the stakes too high to use some euphemism. You dig? You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of times people hear about the crime going on with it was it has become infamously known as Chirac. You know what I'm saying? We we got an old we, we relate to the old accent that says God created Africans and America made niggas. We add on to that that the machine this, the machine manufactured Chirac. Similar to the way that the British tried to force China to become a nation of junkies, they forced Medicaid these youngsters up in the, up in here. You know what I'm saying? You go back and check a lot of these cases, as opposed to having a reactionary response. A lot of these children out here, people just think they, they, they just said that they're bad, so on and so forth. Go check the resume. They forcefully medicated them up in here, put them back on the streets, then they had to suffice with some sort of street medication. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to produce a nation of junkies. You know what I'm saying? Anybody believes that this system is trying to just want to stop crime, you believe Don King want to stop boxing. It's done deliberately. We was with to these babies in here, you know what I'm saying? And we, 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 we come check up on our babies in here. We come from real talk. We want to come in and appreciate these brothers. You know what I'm saying? We come from outside Chicago. But as Minister U.E.P. News said, prisoners are microcosm of the outside community. Again, prisoners are microcosm of the outside community. So it's brother. Going down. Like, throughout the country. And again, these are, this, this is the juvenile. You know what I'm saying? You hear, the, you hear the horror stories about Harrisburg and other places. A lot of these youngsters, they come out, they don't talk about it. Similar to like uh, in the Abu Ghraib Baghdad, they ask the prisoners, why did they talk about it? They say, someone was so embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? What happened to them in there? You, you, heard, you heard the brother Mike McGrone just say, they, they shoot on medication, they can't even pro, they, they can't procreate, they can't reproduce. You can, this man, this can be defined nothing less than genocide. So again, we here, we say, what's our call? Free them all. Free them all. Free them all. Yeah, so we all here. And I, one more thing. Uh, more people starting what, to what, up. what is the pathology? I want to talk about brain. What is the pathology of an individual who live in a molded environment with mice, with individuals who, who, who do not have a lived experience, who live in a room with thick, dense paint with graffiti on the wall that's feeding them food that's high in sugar and high in, high in fat? What is the pathology of that? Along with giving clonidine and melatonin, along with other uh, uh, psychotropic medication, we are, in fact, breeding killers. So when you mix all of that in, 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 some, in a pot, we're releasing kids to be a threat not only to themselves, but to each other. They're training them to, be, they're training them to do work. They're so, training them to come back. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And get used to it. They get them used to it. And then, like, it ain't well, so, I mean, it's crazy. 
She's crazy. So, you know. Peace and blessings, family. You know, I heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say that this generation is the greatest generation that God has ever produced. And this generation represents change. And obviously you have those who do not support or want to see the change come about that they know it is time for it to come about. Because two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. There's no more going along with what's been going on. So at this time, we know how brilliant our youth are and with our tutelage and with our mentoring and with our help and with our proper care for them, we're going to have a world of giants. But you have those who are in power right now know that they won't be able to rule while we rule. So that is the conspiracy. There's a hidden hand. There's something that you fear. And that is why you don't want us to come up in there just to just to be a sign of encouragement just to give hope just for them to feel good that somebody cares about them not the fact that you're already treating them if this was an animal shelter there, it would be a premium location and the, the edifice would be in the billions of dollars but you got them housed in a warehouse but we're really not surprised because we've already been taught why but we're going to continue to unite, and that's really the answer, family. If we all come together, this problem will be fixed overnight because our unity will fix it because we have all the resources and that is necessary, and they will be so afraid that whatever we ask for, they will gladly give it to us. All right. So again, we're not talking about the question. We all know we're bringing the answer, and this is it. Stop worrying about the bubble gum shit. Let's worry about the kids, man. Look what they're doing out here. Just look at this. So it's getting real. It's getting real. So they bringing awareness to all this by not letting us in. And this is all we have is, you know, leveraging celebrity for the right reasons to fix the problems. You know, and it's the only reason for it. So we out here. We're going to make a difference and we're not leaving until they make us leave. But they should let us in. You know, again, the senator said let us in. So why are they not letting us in? pause i don't get it we just wanted to look and give bring a solution and try to fix it unless you know it's so bad in there that they know they may have to shut that building down because there's mold in there and there's mice in there and above and beyond anything it's just abuse so we're trying to get these kids rehabilitated so i'm gonna bring away in this and just jump over to tiktok let tiktok know but y'all should let everybody know that we in Chicago, whatever more that you want, check the jail, check the kids' jail. You know, but this one in particular, this one here, the one without the windows. You see that big box? That's why I got a big metal coffin in there. You know, we just, I just want some answers. So I appreciate y'all. I'm, I'm gonna repost it. Let everybody else know. Repost, 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 and I'll get back at you. Hopefully, you know, we do some change. But at the end of the day. They know everybody, at least they know everybody's watching. That's right. At least they know they hot. At least they know, I mean, I don't know how you say no to a senator, what that means is going to look like next week when the governor comes through. Because I know the governor got to want to know what's going on. The bottom line is any public official, if you're cutting the check, make sure you know that it's being spent right. You got to come look. You got to see, especially when it comes to human beings. You know, not the bridge, you know, the, or, or the construction and all that, that's important. But come check out these uh, jails and these schools. Make sure that money's being spent correctly. Because people are, you know, human nature makes you do foul shit. Mm -hmm. But this is crazy. You know, and it's too flagrant. And it must have been going on for a long time. Because somebody's really used to doing it. Someone's real comfortable with not letting the scent pull. You know, but we here. All right, y'all. In the crowd, you yeah. uh, see it. We out here. Let's see it. Let's see what it look like. No, ain't no, no criminals out here, no, no, ain't nobody, no one's acting crazy, no one's even yelling or anything. I, the most I'm doing is talking to y'all. All right, y'all. Check it out. To come back. Okay, y'all, I just wanted to um, post, repost this. This is important. They say that a lot of people are, you know, when they go, you know, the youth, especially juveniles, 
when there are a lot of them are raising themselves that's number one and then on top of that um when you have a household with people that is doing street pharmacy stuff and we all know somebody that has kids that's in the streets that's out here wilding out because they're raising themselves they don't have you know they they're not old enough to get no job so they have to hustle to to eat we know this a lot of crimes that's taking place right now is because of the situations that children have grew up in. And for them to put them in a facility where there's no windows, um, mold, and stuff like this, this do need to be brought to everybody's attention. So, um, you know, if you have a channel, spread the word about this facility, you know, in Chicago that is this inhumane, y'all. It is. They don't even treat animals like this seriously so we have to do something about it we definitely have to do something about this this is crazy and they are probably doing it everywhere to be honest but anyway y'all um please like share and subscribe if you like this video um shout out to dame dash for even coming to chicago to even you know take a stand against mess like this okay y'all and everybody else that came from out of town, from all over the place, that came to support him in this his journey to, you know, get some justice for people being treated like this. You, you're not supposed to keep people where there's mold at. That's number one. There's no way for them to get well, y'all. And from what they're saying, they're keeping them zooted up off of pharmacy stuff. So when they do get out on the streets, they still got issues going on with them. They are worse than when they came in there. But anyway, y'all, please like, share, and subscribe if you like this video. And thanks for watching. Salute to Dame Dash and peace.